Oh, it's Timmy with Collard Valley Cooks. And we are back in the kitchen. I am doing well and I am not coughing. Um, so I am making delicious fried pies today with some fresh apples. Um, I didn't want to take the time to go to the store and buy dried apples when I've got fresh apples here. And um, we're gonna make some fried pies in a skillet, in an iron skillet. I'm gonna use Macintosh and uh, I believe these are ambrosia, Chris? Yep, ambrosia. ambrosia apples. And we got everything laid out. The recipe's in our first cookbook. And um, so we're just gonna get started. I'm gonna hop over to the trash can and go ahead and peel these last two. This one is Macintosh. Macintosh is a very soft um, flesh apple and it's white. It's real pretty and white. Um, so we're going to peel these last two apples, slice them up and get them started cooking. And they're going to simmer and cook at a pretty high temperature while we make our dough for our apples. I mean for our pies. <laughs> Hope y'all are having a wonderful and blessed Sunday. Me and Chris sure are. It's nice to be back in the kitchen. Um, even if I'm in here today, I'm really not cooking a meal today. I'm just doing these apple pies. We are also going to stay separated still for another four days, just in the bedrooms and stuff, uh, just to be safe for Chris. And um, But things are looking up and looking well. I hope y'all are having, uh, I said, I've already said that, <laughs> having a good day. Um, it's so good to see everybody today. It's nice to be back in here, I have to say. I'm a little bit tired from getting dressed, but not too bad. So, we're going to get this party started. I am going to add just a little bit of butter to the skillet. And it has preheated. This is a half stick of butter. You could stay right there, baby. This is a half stick of butter going in. Well, I didn't know it was going to be that hot. That's going to burn it. We'll just let that sit right there while we uh, slice up the rest of these apples. So you can see the Macintosh is really white. And you want to have your pot ready for your apples so that they don't turn brown too quick, okay? We're gonna get them over here and get them cooking really quick. So real quick, I'm gonna slice these up. Now, if you want your apples diced, you can dice them. I just slice them, okay? But you do what you wanna do. I'm making plenty of apples, and it doesn't take a lot of apples to make an apple pie when you're doing a fried pie. Let's talk to them, Chris, while I'm doing this, honey bun. You got anything you want to say? Has anybody got any questions while we're on here live today? <laughs> we're going to be using uh, white lily self-rising flour to do our pies. You really just make a biscuit dough. Um, and I usually use a little bit of butter in my biscuit dough when I do a fried pie instead of just using shortening. Now you can use shortening. Uh, it's not gonna hurt anything. Cause Lord knows we're gonna have plenty of butter in these things. The secret to my fried pies mostly is that I, I put butter in them while they're cooking, the apples. I put butter in the oil that I fry them in. I put a good bit of oil in the skillet and then I add a half stick of butter to it and it makes the crust nice and buttery, okay? And uh, it's one of my secrets. You can have all my secrets if you get the cookbooks. <laughs> yeah, I'm down to 30 pounds lost, and now we're eating this, but oh don't, it goodness. don't hurt every day, every other, or every once in a while, I mean. Just I like, did burn that butter. You think I should pour it out and start over? I have no idea. I do. Y'all just forgive me, I'm gonna make some mistakes today. Um, we'll start 
are they burnt? It's not real burnt, but I want them to taste good, okay? So I'm just gonna rinse this out and dry it with paper towel and we're gonna start over. Go ahead and turn it back on. And yeah, we'll have the recipe posted uh, for you guys. You'll be able to go back and look at it on the yeah. video. Some people are asking about the recipe. Okay, I'm gonna put my apples in here. Um, we need some sugar. So we're gonna put about a cup of sugar in it. Do you want me to give some of my monk sugar, Chris? Uh, we can try it. Yeah. I mean, we know it's good. Yeah. I just want to know, do you want to use it or not? Mm-hmm. Okay. I got to run and get it. Are you going to put butter in there? I've got to, Chris. I can't do three things at one time. <laughs> I'd put the butter in there before I worried about the sugar. All right, we're going to add a cup of sugar and a half stick of butter. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to um, it's up to you whether or not you want to add spices to your apples. We don't. Okay, Mama never did. Uh, I do put cinnamon sugar on the pies once I'm done and a lot of people don't do that either. Um, so I'm going to put a lid on this. Let me just stir those up good. And then we're going to get over here and make us some biscuit dough. So if you're just tuning in, we're making fresh apple pie today, except we're are you making them in the skillet. That's how you get them done really quick and it's delicious fast. Right, Chris? Yep. And there's nothing like, to me it's better. I love biscuit dough more than I like pie dough myself, personally. And so um, I would rather have a fried pie than an apple pie myself. Um, the biscuit dough just tastes delicious to me. So, I'm watching this a little closer because this is that monk fruit sugar and I wanted to make sure it was going to melt and not stick to the bottom. We're going to put a lid on that. Now, I haven't been in the kitchen in a week, so hopefully Chris has got things mostly where it goes and I'll be able to find stuff. That looks good already. Okay, that's doing good, y'all. It's doing really good. So we're gonna put a lid on it so that all that melts down in there, and that's gonna cook while we're mixing up our pie dough. Now, for the pie dough, we're gonna use a cup and a half of self-rising flour. <coughs> And this is a cup. I could get by with just one, but I guess I'll do the full recipe. We can um, do something else with what's left. All right, you're gonna use about four tablespoons of butter. Now this is soft butter, and I stuck it in the microwave because we didn't have any at room temperature because we haven't really been eating butter. So we're gonna cut this into our pie crust what I do have that's soft enough. This is um, biscuit dough. It's really what you fry fried pies in. You don't really make pie crust, you make biscuit dough. Or that's the way we grew up eating a fried pie. Um, most people make them with a biscuit dough. Now, I use sweet milk when I do fried pies. I'm gonna add the rest of that in there too. I use sweet milk and not buttermilk when I make fried pies. But now you can use buttermilk if you want to. Okay. Now we're going to add our milk. Because it's sweet milk, it's thinner. 
and when I say sweet milk, I just mean regular milk. So you really, you should never really go by the liquid in a, in a biscuit recipe. You should add it a little bit at a time, no matter whose recipe it is, even if it's mine, because it's according to what kind of milk you got. You could have whole milk, which is a little thicker. You could have skim milk. You could have buttermilk. You could have whole buttermilk, and they're all a little bit different in their thickness, which does make a difference in how much it's gonna take to bind the flour together, okay? I'm gonna reach behind me and stir this. Oh, I'm over here, come on, Chris. Here's our apples. We're gonna add a dash of salt to these apples right quick, and I'm gonna turn them up on high. What do you want them to get done? Add a dash of salt to them. Where are you going? That's the oh, kind of fruit. sugar that we're using. Okay. It is zero uh, calorie sweetener. <laughs> zero calorie. It's sugar free, vegan, zero net carbs, non GMO, gluten free, tastes like sugar. Now, as far as. The only thing we care about is it's zero calories. Um, I see. <laughs> yeah. But I mean. Yeah. It's. It says it's tooth friendly. <laughs> it's good for your teeth. I added a dash of salt to these apples while y'all were stepped away over there. And we're just cooking them. And some people are asking about the pastry fork and stuff like that. Anything that we have that we use is on www.collardvalleycooks.com. www.collardvalleycooks.com. Yeah. So anything that we are using, you can find there. And yeah. guess what I added to the list of shop now today? What? I did this morning. Aprons and table linens. Oh. Um, I've got some Christmas and some Thanksgiving. There's some really pretty stuff in there, y'all. Um, so y'all should go check it out. If, if, you, um, if you can, just go to the website and click on shop now and then click on um, aprons and linens. And you will see some beautiful aprons. It's my favorite um, apron company. And they have really good quality stuff. So you'll see about how you mix up pie crust. It's a little for fried pies. And dumplings are the same way. So you could use the same, you use the same method for a dumpling as you do for a fried pie. So you want it a little bit drier than you would a regular biscuit. Okay. Now that's an apple top. Hmm. I guess I should have cooked my apples before y'all came on here. I, I thought that it wouldn't take them that long to cook. Okay. So when you do a fried pie, you do have to roll your dough out pretty thin, just like you would a dumpling. If you don't, then it's going to be too thick, and you're going to have a huge bite of dough with just a tiny little bit of apple, okay? So you want it to be pretty uniform um, with apple and dough. So try not to make a pie dough for your fried apple pies that's really thick, okay? It also needs to be stiff enough that the pie, uh, that the apples do not make it tear apart. That is a little bit soft. Do you see how that fell? You do it just like you do dumplings, okay? So we're gonna put just a little bit of flour in here. And that way, when you pick it up as a sheet, it shouldn't fall apart like that, okay? Because if it does, that means that when you add your apples to it and you crimp the edges, they're just going to get soggy and cause a hole in your pie. And usually I don't have that much time to show you how to do a really good pie crust, but today I do since we're cooking these apples. Okay. 
Today I'm having to go at a slower pace because I am recovering. I'm doing really good. The biggest thing that COVID did for me, um, as far as now, I didn't even have a fever, y'all, with it, which is amazing. But the biggest thing it affected with me is my heart rate. It made my heart rate really high. So when I get up, even now, my heart rate goes to about 120. Um, and it used to didn't do that. And I read about that online and it said that can last up to 70 something days and sometimes even longer. So that's just part of it. And I've never had any kind of heart issues. I don't even have a high blood pressure. But apparently the virus does go into the heart muscle with a lot of people and it splays the muscles. You can read about that if you want to, but you can look it up. All right. I know I've got enough flour in there. I just want to roll it out pretty thin, okay? It's a little while to cook, apparently. Mm. We might have to do something else. I could use some filling and make them. So I use the bottom of my sifter. A lot of people look around the house trying to find something round to cut their circles with. You can just use the bottom of your sifter. Um, it works perfect. If you've got a regular size sifter, um, it does a really good job, actually. And I don't know how I discovered that. One day I was just in here cooking, and I thought, you know, Tammy, it was time to cut the circles, and I was looking all over the place for something to cut them out of, and and I just it just dawned on me, Tammy, use the bottom of the sifter. That's round. It's round, and it's open with holes. So it breathes, it's perfect. Mm. It makes the perfect circle for your fried pies. 360 degrees. 360, I, I was thinking, why is he saying that? It's a circle. It's, it's a circle, correct. All right, we're gonna cut out two more. And I like to cook my apples, y'all, until they're good and done and soft. Mama always cooked them until they were almost dark looking and sticky. You really should. I probably should have used regular sugar, but... Because I really don't know how that sugar is going to react to make a filling. Okay, I'm just going to cut out one more. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open. I am. I'm going to go ahead and open some filling. I'm going to turn this on and start preheating this oil. Okay? And before I open the filling, I am going to roll these out a little bit more. Once I cut them, I also take the um, rolling pin and I roll them again. So I get them as flat as I can, okay? And if you if you make your dough right, it should be like that. It shouldn't just tear all the pieces. If it's tearing, just throw it all back in a circle and put some more flour in it, okay? Just start over, it ain't no big deal. You can just keep going. Lord, everybody loves fried pies, don't they, Chris? Oh, yeah. I loved peach the best when I was growing up. But now, dried peaches have a very distinct flavor. One time I made them for Chris, and he wasn't crazy about them. Because dried peaches taste a lot different than fresh peaches. Don't they, Chris? Mm -hmm. But because I grew up eating them, I love them. 
like that. So take the time out to roll it out one more time just to get it good and thin, and that way you can get more apples or filling in there, all right? Go ahead and preheat your oil. What kind of pie do you want, Chris? If I open some filling. Y'all, I know y'all probably think I'm cheating, but I don't have time to wait on these apples to get done. I thought it wouldn't take that long. And you know, I'm recovering, so I'm not gonna stand up in here for a really long time today. And mama can do that, okay? By the time I fry the first batch, I might can get some of these apples and use them. Yeah, they're starting to cook down now. But I want to go ahead and make a few. Okay. So that we're not bored. All right. If you come over here to my pantry, you will see that I have, let me move this. Pie crust, plenty of them. <laughs> um, filling, and I've got peach. I've got apple, I've got, I thought I had some lemon, but I don't, I've got strawberry, I've got apple. Let's do the peach. Um, well, I guess I don't have lemon. I thought I did. You wanna do peach? Yeah, let's do that. All right, so we're gonna just use some Duncan Hines peach pie filling so that we can start a um, batch. Now, let them see me for a minute. If you're new and you haven't seen me cook on the cooking show with Collard Valley Cooks, I do cook like Mama did, but I am recovering from COVID. This is my first day back in the kitchen, and I'm already getting a little short-winded and tired. So, instead of standing here forever and waiting on these apples to cook, we're going to open some pie filling and we're going to go ahead and fry about three pies while these apples finish cooking and that way you guys can see my method of of what i do okay without me wearing myself out too much okay all right you can come back over here baby all right we're going to make three peach Three fits in the skillet good. I use a 10 and a quarter inch iron skillet when I fry pies. Um, I'm gonna get me a spoon. Now, lots of times this filling don't have enough peaches in it. It's mostly gel. So I am going to personally pick out the peaches since we're just gonna make three of these and not just let it be a bunch of goop, but more peaches, if that makes sense. We'll put a little goop in there to make it delicious, okay? Yeah, but you gotta be careful. If you put too much of that stuff in there, y'all know it'll turn to liquid. You gotta make sure your pies seal good and all that stuff. Well, if they if they do. roll out their pies like I did today, mm -hmm. they're gonna be nice and nice and tough. Yeah. And they shouldn't tear. Y'all, I'm being picky because I don't want just a bunch of gel. Isn't it crazy how they fill up this can full of instead of peaches, it's full of the other stuff. So if you make some and you're using a filling, whether it's cherry or peach or whatever it is, if you use it out of a can like that, try not to just fill it full of the uh, gel part. Like you, that's the way you get them. If you if you get them from uh, the store, you know they're just full of hardly any real fruit. Now we're going to take a. Uh, Because you're starting to cook now. Mm -hmm. All right, you want them to start kind of getting a little bit brown like that. Now we're going to take a, a fork and we're going to go around the edges of our pies with a fork. 
and then we're gonna drop them. It only takes a minute to cook them, but please take the time out to really roll them thin like I did, because if you don't, you're gonna have a lot of dough, real fat dough, and hardly any filling, and it's harder to get all the dough done, and you don't want it to be raw, okay, when you take it out. Um, it's really easy to do this, y'all. It's a lot harder when you're talking and showing somebody what to do. I could have had these done a while ago if I were just if I already had my filling made. Because I can mix up biscuit dough in probably about three minutes, typically. It's about all it would take me. All right. I want real butter in here, not margarine. I'll get you some. There's some right here. Okay. Real oh, butter. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, when I fry my pies, I heat up the oil and then I add some real butter. About a half a stick, okay? It makes all the difference in the world. And it makes the crust nice and buttery. Mama didn't do this, but I do. Sometimes I do things that Mama didn't quite do. This is a uh, Lugera, I think it's the name of it. Butter is some good stuff. It's French butter. You can short to them, Chris. Lugera. Clubbera, however you say it. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Here we go. We're going to add these to the skillet. I usually cook three at a time. And I put the round part of the pie along the round part of the skillet. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn it down just a hair. All right. Now you can tell that these apples over here are getting brown and that's how you want them to be when you make a pie out of them. You want them to start glazing over like that. Um, they're gonna make a really good pie. So we're gonna bring these over here, they're ready. They're getting sticky. That's how you know they're getting sticky. I'm just going to sit them right here, and we'll make about three like that. But I've got to watch these. You can't leave these in there forever. But we need to hurry. Let me see. Chris, you just watch those while I throw some filling in here. I'm watching. She usually cooks these maybe, what, about three minutes per side? Something like that? Oh, no. I just cook them until they're brown. Oh. Sometimes it don't take that long. Come here, show them these real quick. Y'all see the apples? And then we're gonna see how they're nice and brown. That's how I like them. Now I'm gonna fold them over and get them ready. So, but I'm gonna flip these right quick. Um. There it is. It's golden brown. Yep, turkey tail. There you go. All right. See, it only takes them a couple of minutes. And really, you need to have the other ones ready when those come out because you don't want your grease to get too hot. If you do, it's not going to taste good. And the flour that's left out in the bottom of the skillet is going to burn. And then your pies aren't going to taste as good and they'll also not be quite as pretty. Now these pies, because this filling was wet, are going to want to tear apart easier. So I might have to be really careful when I put them in there. This is more like the greedy ones. All right, I need a spoon. Do you want this? Well, yeah. Sometimes I will actually, I'm going to grab this over here, honey. Okay. We're going to get these up.
perfect. All right, we're gonna throw the other ones in there real quick. And while those are hot, it's good to, this one's torn a little bit. That looks more like granny's. You gotta be careful dropping them in there. Don't get grease on them. You can freeze these too, y'all. You can freeze them. So like today, um, if I keep making them, I can, um, I've got three left. I can freeze them when I'm done. And then me and Chris can take them out of the freezer and warm them up in our air fryer and have them with ice cream on a night that I don't want to cook a dessert, okay? Oh, cinnamon, cinnamon sugar. sugar. Now, you don't have to do this. A lot of people don't like that. Uh, but if you like cinnamon sugar, I like to put the cinnamon sugar on them while they're still hot. Me and Chris really like it. Now, some people don't. So I'll put this on too, so that we'll have some with and without. Okay, this is one of our favorite things in the world this time of year, especially using fresh apples. And now we always had dried apples most of the time. Mama made these with dried apples because Granny had an apple tree. But now you don't have to um, use dried apples. That's a pretty good temp because they're getting nice and golden without getting too brown. That one was busted open, so you can tell um, where it was busted. This one was too. That don't hurt the taste of it though, that's Ooh, for sure. they're so good, y'all, I'm telling you. You can't get a better dessert than this. And we like them just like they are. We don't eat them with ice cream, do we, Chris? No. We just eat them. They're too good. Too good on this one's own. busted too. That's what happens when you're using fresh apples. Lots of times they bust. Not all of them will bust. So if you're going to freeze some, eat the busted ones first, and save the ones that are sealed good for the freezer. Yeah, you have to eat those damaged ones. Yeah, that's the fun part. I remember when I worked at Kroger when I was in college, I worked at Kroger. And back then, we would get the pound cake in and we would mix it up and put it in the oven and take it out. And we'd have to flip them out back in the day. Now everything comes in frozen, but um, we loved for a pound cake to break. And sometimes uh, people would accidentally break them. <laughs> Oops. Just so that we could put them out as a sample. I broke the pound cake. Yeah. And then we would all get a bite. Hmm. My grease is getting pretty doggone hot. Can you turn that down a little bit, Chris? It's too hot. It really is. It's smoking hot, ain't it? Mm-hmm. The more you make, the uglier they get because the grease gets dirty. And you can add a little extra to it if you want to, but I'm not. All right, I'm going to put some cinnamon sugar on these, a couple of these. And then we're gonna open one up and give it a try. But let's finish this up real quick so that um, I can get these out. I know this has been a long video, but it's been fun to be back in the kitchen. And I thought today, you know what? If I'm gonna get back in the kitchen and get tired, I'm gonna make something that's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> get your money's worth. Woo, yeah. And I knew this would be. Well, you know what? I could probably just use this. If you've never had a scraper in your kitchen and you do make biscuits and stuff like that and dumplings, most
would have never had one when I was growing up. I'm gonna tell you, they're wonderful. They sure do make cleaning up easy. My baby. Mm -hmm. Now watch how easy that is to clean up. So it's really not that hard to get in the kitchen and mix up something homemade. And I'm gonna tell you, if you use white lily flour, it's gonna taste even better, won't it, Chris? Oh yeah. And I always use self-rising. I use self-rising for everything I batter. I use self-rising for everything except cookies and pies. Cookies, you wanna be chewy and flat. So you don't wanna use it for that. Pie crust, of course, you don't wanna be fluffy unless you're making a biscuit one like we're doing. Um, but the rest of the time, even in cakes, white lily flour is wonderful, even in cakes. It's a very light flour, and it makes a delicious cake. Get back there, buddy. Oh, we're almost on the end. Almost there, y'all. Almost there. still kind of staying away from each other. We're still in our separate rooms. Um, I'll be so glad to get back in the bed with my husband. I'm not going to lie. I told the doctor when I seen the doctor yesterday, I said, do I still have to separate from my husband? Because it's been 10 days. And he said, well, as long as you're coughing, you really need to stay away from him. And I said, well, don't go on. I've been away from him for so long. He said, I he said, I have to stay away from my house, my wife because I'm around people in this in this uh, office. And I said, well, yeah, I guess so. You know, you don't think about the poor doctors and health workers and how they have to guard their families too. I'm gonna take that off that eye. Aren't those pretty? You know what, those last ones coming out are not dark, they're pretty. No. Where you turned it down. This is the oh. last three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Aren't they pretty? Mm -hmm. Woo! Let's eat one, y'all. Y'all ready? It's time for the reward. I'm going to try one of these. Well, really and truly, the peach pie filling is nothing more than canned peaches with just a little bit of glaze. Um... So we're gonna, get, we're gonna have two of them. We'll have a, a, a apple one, and we'll have a peach one, okay? Where you may be, over there. Over here. So, here's one. Isn't that pretty? Can they see it good? It's a little dark. A little dark? Mm -hmm. It's because of the angle you're at, probably. See that? That's the peach. Okay. Okay. Let's get an apple. Any money, money, mo. I don't want to get burnt. We got to get one that's not just come out. When I taste it. And there's the apple. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm sure the apple's gonna be better because I made it from fresh apples. That peach is good too, though. Mm -hmm. It's like having a peach cobbler and a buttery crust. You can't mess it up. And an apple cobbler and a buttery crust. To me, these are better than apple, the regular pie crust. They're just so good. It's like a buttery biscuit with some delicious feeling. Thanks so much for watching Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. <laughs>